great day for everyone who's been going, we need rain. Yes. Yes. A few that are going, eh, but great that's story. okay. Yeah, yes. we're, we're glad to get it. Just a couple uh, announcements before we begin. Uh, you have your uh, SPL news there with you, so a lot of that you can certainly read for yourself. And at the end of the service, the announcements will go ahead and scroll, as we've done those in the past as well. Uh, so the women's Bible craft went really, really well. In fact, the, the finished product is one sitting in the, uh, the on the pew outside the, the church office there. But I had uh, five, I think five women that came, and uh, they had a wonderful time. More than enough refreshments there. Uh, the guys, we had eight or nine uh, guys, and uh, it was it was great. It was really great. We're off to a great start. So. You know, some of that might be interested, or you'd like us to contact them, whether it's the women's group or the, or the guys who let us know. Um, but we're, we're getting that going here. You see the Pizza Ranch uh, ad there. So to get to go is, of course, the biggest thing. And then if you'd like to help, super, that'd be great. We're kicking off our vacation Bible school this week. And so uh, you'll be seeing things transform around here. And we've got a lot of stuff from a church that did it before, so we'll be able to really uh, have that wow factor with music and skits and all of the kids. And so we're, we need to have them sign up as soon as possible so we know we have numbers and great ministry teams that are coming up and doing meals each, each night at 5.30. So it's from 6 to 8 uh, total, I think. Uh, let's see. Eddie, I got, you can see the Chiefs. You see that's going on. Um, any other announcements that anybody here would like to? Bernie? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm going to say that at the end because I'm, I'm kind of going to be trying to make levity about that. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and look at the guiding statement inside there. If you don't know it by heart, you, you, you will. We are, let's ready, we're going to read it out loud together. And we're going to do it twice, and then we're done. We are a beacon of the community, equipping, empowering, and sharing the hope and love of Jesus. Here we go. We are a beacon of the community, equipping, empowering, and sharing the hope and love of Jesus. Excellent. Thanks so much for that. Everything we do will be leading towards that. Um, having met already with uh, Pastor Tom, we are on our way to what they call ministry mapping. So that's super too. And uh, so here's the deal. Um, being a beacon, many of you might remember that on top of our steeple, there was the, uh, top of the bell tower was a, a cross and it used to work. And, you know, it's like, okay, when they put it in the new section, something happened, it no longer is that beacon. Well, the bell rope broke. I'm going to be doing a wonderful dong, 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 there you go, ding dong, that's our, our bell this morning. Um, but that means we have to get up there, and when we're getting up there, we'll fix that rope, and guess what? We will be a beacon. We'll be shining in our community, so that'll be kind of physical, uh, of course, certain, certain spiritually. So, I pray God's blessings on your worship today. You've been called through God's mercy to come before him this morning. In fact, that's our opening hymn, Today Your Mercy Calls Us.
Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise in the assembly of God. Let Israel be glad in his maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with salvation. Praise the Lord. Take a moment to prepare your hearts for confession. Let us now make confession of our sins to God, our Heavenly Father. Merciful Father, we confess our sinfulness. We are not worthy for you to come among us. We are indeed sinful from our birth, and since that time have transgressed against you in thought, word, and deed. Our actions have brought injury to others. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. We have done those things which we ought not to have done. We sincerely repent of our sins. Graciously hear this, our confession, O Lord, and grant us your grace and forgiveness in Jesus Christ. By the renewing work of the Holy Spirit within us, lead us to amend our sinful lives, that each day we may grow in righteousness and in hope to the glory of your holy name. Jesus, our Redeemer and God's greatest gift, promises forgiveness, life, and salvation, and welcomes us to his table. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority I forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, as you believe, so may it be. Amen. Christ, 
to seek and to save the lost. Graciously open our ears and our hearts to hear his call and to follow him by faith that we may feast with him forever in his kingdom. Through, Je through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for our first reading. Left side, right side. Left side, right side. <laughs> uh. Our first reading comes to us from Hosea chapter 5, beginning with the 15th verse and then continuing into Hosea chapter 6. I will return again to my place until they acknowledge their guilt and seek my face, and in their distress earnestly seek me. Come, let us return to the Lord, for he has torn us, he has, and he, that he may heal us. He has struck us down and he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up, that we may live before him. Let us know, let us press on to know the Lord. He is going out. His going out is sure as the dawn. He will come to us as the showers, as the spring rains that water the earth. What shall I do with you, O Ephraim? What shall I do with you, O Judah? Your love is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes early away. Therefore I have hewn them by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For I desire steadfast love, not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burnt offering. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You have dealt well with your servant, O Lord, according to your word. I believe in your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. You are good and do good. Teach me your statutes. The insolent sinner in the lies, but with my whole heart I keep your precepts. Their heart is unfeeling like that, but I delight in your law. It is good for me that I was afflicted, that I might learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver pieces. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading, our epistle lesson, comes from Romans chapter 4, beginning with the 13th verse. For the promise to Abraham and his offspring that he would be heir of the world did not come through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if it is the adherents of the law who are to be heirs, faith is null, and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, there is no transgression. That is why it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed for all his offspring, not only to the adherent of the law, but also to the ones who share the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations in the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. In hope, he believed against hope, that he should become the father of many nations. As he had been told, so shall your offspring be. 
He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No unbelief made him waver concerning the promise of God. But he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. That is why his faith was counted to him as righteousness. But the words it was counted to him were not written for his sake alone, but also for ours. It will be counted to us who believe in him who raised from the dead Jesus our Lord, who has delivered up for our trespasses and raised for our justification. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. On your wondrous works I will meditate. Hallelujah. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. Hallelujah. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. And he rose and followed him. And as Jesus reclined at the table in the house, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and were reclining with Jesus and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to the disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? When he heard it, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated for the hymn of the day. I am trusting thee, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Awesome. Ah, 
Well, let's sit right here today, okay? I like your sandals. Why did you wear those today? That's my favorite answer. I used to say it to my mom all the time. You all heard what she said? Maybe you didn't? All right, so if I say, so why are you here this morning, they say? Because. Yeah, that's it. Is that the only pair of shoes you have? The only one? You don't have any shoes, any more shoes in your whole house? You have other shoes, don't you? Do you have, you have other shoes too? And other shirts too? Well, why did you choose that today? It matches, it matches your outfit, and it does, and it matches uh, your toenails too, doesn't it? You paint it, and it looks very nice. You know, we're going to be talking about making choices today, okay? So I wanted to ask maybe if you could make a choice. Let's see, if I said, um, uh, do you choose, do you have a favorite color? Or one of your favorite colors? What's one of your favorite colors? White? What's one of your favorite colors? Pink. Pink, right. All right, let me ask another question. Um, one of your favorite foods? Pizza. What's your, one of your favorite foods? Grapes. Grapes, right, right, okay. Um, got another question for you, let's see. Um, do you like to sleep in in the morning or do you like to get up early? Sleep in? You like to sleep in too? Yeah, you both like to sleep in. Now, now here, here's a little tougher one, okay? I'll sleep in because then Daddy's friend with Charlotte and... Yeah? <laughs> well, if, if, if I were to say, I, um, if I had a quarter, okay, and it was my money, and I put it um, on that table right there, Is it okay to take it or not? You say no. What about you? If it's my quarter, can you just take it? Why? No, can you take it? No. Okay. Um, if your dad says it's time to be quiet, okay, and is it okay to talk? No. Now you just... You had, I just gave you like five choices. Pink and white, pizza and grapes. Is eating pizza wrong? Is eating grapes wrong? No. But when I said the quarter, or your dad telling you to be quiet, there's a right and there's a wrong, isn't there? So there's a lot of choices that we can make that are okay to make. Pink and white, matching outfit, sleeping in, not sleeping in, all those things are okay to do. But sometimes there are choices that are right and wrong, and we need to know the difference between right and wrong. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about choices for everyone here in, in this place, and they're gonna hear some of these things today that there are a lot of wonderful choices that we can make, but sometimes we have to make the right choice because there is a wrong choice. Now, if God says, this is right, and this is wrong, if we choose the wrong one, what, do we know what we call that? We do something that's not right for God? We call it sinning. And that's why we said, we're sorry, God, please forgive me, and we did it earlier. Well, I don't have anything to hand you this morning, but I want to thank you for coming up. And again, I got pink and white sandals. I mean, who, who'd guess, right? You guys can go back and sit down. Thanks so much for coming up. Well, my text for today's message is actually coming from the book of Acts, and I'd like to read the text. I will be making allusions to uh, the Roman passage, as well as the Gospel, and as well as the Old Testament that was read uh, earlier. When they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away, 
And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas the son of James. All of these were of one accord, devoting themselves to prayer, together with women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the brothers, the company of persons that was about 120, and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. He was numbered among us and was allotted his share in the ministry. Now this man acquired a field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his bowels gushed out. And it became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the field was called, in their own language, Akal Dama, that is, the field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, May his camp become desolate, and let there be no one to dwell in it, and let another take his office. So one of the men who had accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went up and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. And they put forward to Joseph, called Barsabbas, who was also called Justus and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, Lord, know the hearts of all. Show with one of these two you have chosen to take the place of this ministry and the apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. If you're following along with your SPL news, you'll see on the one part of it, there is an outline for you if you'd like to uh, keep up and fill in those blanks. So if I had to ask all of you a choice to choose something, it wouldn't be a surprise because we make, every day we make choices. You can't believe, perhaps, the number of choices that are being made almost instantaneous. And some of them are easy, and some of them are not so easy. If I asked you to choose between a million dollars and a candy bar, you could probably come up with a decision pretty quickly. If I asked you to choose between a million dollars and two million dollars, that decision would be a cinch. If I asked you to choose between a million dollars and a penny, that's not a problem. If I ask you to choose between a penny and a candy bar, still probably no big deal. But what if I ask you to choose between two of your favorite candy bars? Since Ellie, my granddaughter, and her younger sister, Annie, were asked, you know, about refreshments by her, their grandmother, and I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell on my wife today, would you like juice boxes or Gatorade? Ellie responds, can we have both? Mother says, now Ellie, Grandma gave you a choice. Now Grandma's thinking you're gonna get both, right? But, just gotta acknowledge mine. I want Gatorade. Annie doesn't miss a beat. I want Juice boxes. I think they're in cahoots together. Yeah, there was both available to them. If you have to think a little bit harder when there are some choices that come, that's okay. On a daily basis, there are choices. And I would estimate that every person, how many they make today, what would you estimate? 50, 70, 100, 1,000? I say it's higher. I say the choices are sometimes instantaneous, and sometimes you actually have to think about it. You have to choose to get up out of bed. You have to choose what to wear. You have to choose whether to brush your teeth or whether or not you're going to use mouthwash. You have to choose whether you're going to take a shower or a bath, whether you're going to comb your hair or wear a hat. You're going to have to choose 
You had to choose even how you were going to get out of the house. You had to choose which, you had to grab the doorknob. You had to choose to turn around left or right to close it. Constantly, choices are going on. Young people, when they go to school, they have to choose what desk, if it is an assigned, to sit in. Whether you're going to raise your hand before you speak. Whether you're going to speak at all. In fact, during the school year, just before the first period, you're already thinking about lunch, whether it's going to be pizza or grapes. What's it going to be? What you're going to put on your french fries? What you're going to put on your hamburger? What you're going to have for the meal? What you're going to serve with the meal? Where are you going to sit this time? Do you want the inside or out? Constantly. In fact, you're making choices right now. You heard about the grapes, you heard about the pizza, and you, you left. Some of you chose not to laugh, but you didn't think about the choice. It just happened. Choices. Choices. Some are easy and simple. And I'm just going to go to the next blank. Some are more difficult. How do you make choices? Well, you make them based on what? Experience. And when you don't have an experience, it, it, if you do have an experience, it might be a simple thing. Most people in this room are right-handed. If you're going to use something, pick something up, or write, draw, or use that, you're going to use your right hand. All right? Some of you are left-handed. You don't think about it. You just do it. Here, sign your name. Boom, you're right at it. You don't think at all. If I were to say, okay, here's your last will and testament. Sign it. Well, it doesn't happen right away. You, you start to think a little bit more about it. Now you have another opportunity for another choice. Perhaps it's more difficult, but it does take more thought. Most of your choices you can depend on experience, like right-handed or left-handed, but what about getting into a situation that you've never experienced before? That happens, doesn't it? We have situations that we come in place and we say, I don't know what to do. How do we make that choice? Well, many of us simply go on past experiences. What has been done in the past in our reading from the book of Acts? Peter and the rest of the apostles needed to make a choice. They concluded that this significant number of 12 apostles was important to our Lord Jesus Christ. How did they decide that? They probably decided that upon past experiences of what Jesus did to be important. He was intentional on what he did and what he said. I would imagine that when they went out healing and teaching and preaching, they did it very similarly to their rabbi of whom they spent three years watching him and learning him and walking in the same footsteps as he walked. And so when he had 12 and stopped with 12, a significant number to all Jews and to most Christendom today because of the 12 apostles, but really because of the 12 tribes and a 12, the number of completion. But now how do we decide? I like this because I love her shirt. I'm going to pick her. But I really like that shade of green or teal that Debbie's wearing. Maybe I'll pick her. Well, now that peachy color that Gordon's wearing, he looks sharp today. I think I'll pick him. How about that fuchsia purple striped shirt that Bob's wearing? I'm going to make a choice on who's the next disciple by what they wear? That doesn't make sense. So how do we do that? Well, in the past, we've, we've drawn lots. We've cast lots. We've, we've done things that have guided by God. I know that we've done this in churches and in, in my synagogue growing up. I remember that's how they would make some decisions. And the disciples thought that was a very natural thing to do. But wasn't there more to it before they did it? And they prayed and said, you, Lord, know the hearts of all. Show us which one of these two you have chosen. 
being a beacon of the community, equipping, empowering, and sharing the hope and love of Jesus is a guiding statement. It's something that we seek to achieve, and we want to own it for each person here. Not, oh, my church has this guiding statement. My prayer, truly a prayer, has been said and uttered that it becomes your guiding statement, your personal thought. I desire to be a beacon. I desire to not only be, but to empower and equip and to share the hope and love of Jesus. Everything that I do when I have a guiding statement, a principle, a guide in my life, involves discerning the will of God. The Bible makes it obvious that you have to make choices. The Bible makes it very clear that you've got some decisions to make and that the decisions you make will be, well, they'll very much affect you. Deuteronomy 30 says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both of you and your descendants may live. This is God's word. Let's get into it. Let's cherish it. It's, it's his spoken word. It's God revealed in, in holy writ or holy writ, writ, writing. You know, back in the day, Paul and the apostles, there were a lot of gods that were talked about. We've heard about Baal, we've heard about maybe Apollo, maybe you've heard of these other Zeus's, all these other gods. And these people were very devout, they absolutely believed that the gods were real and that they would reveal themselves to them. Of course, they had to be super faithful and super loyal and provide and do all kinds of things in order to gain their favor. And then, of course, came along this Jew, this Jew God, this Yahweh, who's been there all the time, a different concept that they had simply drifted away from since the beginning of time. But what they would do back in that day is they would seek the favor of God and they would try to find out what their God would reveal to them about choices. They would travel miles and miles, some, sometimes days of walking, and they would go before the God. They would find the temple of Apollos in Priene. And they would go and they would seek the favor. And a priest would come out and the doors would open up. After they had done the right sacrifice and submitted the right forms, not you know, more figuratively than literally, the God of Apollo will hear you. And then they would ask the question. We have been growers all of our lives. We have tilled the land and the soil all of our lives. Our whole city, our whole tribe, our, our whole town thrives on that. But recently we've discovered in the hills precious metals and stones. And stones of which to lay foundations. We want to know, since we've been following the God of, of the of the of the ground and of the soil and of the, the moisture of the air and if he will be so angry if we were to switch and become something different and we need guidance and then the doors would close there wouldn't be an answer and they would wait and they would wait and they would wait and they would wait if they had to leave, someone else would return in their, in their place. They, they would stay until the answer was given. Days, who knows, weeks, I don't know. And then the doors would open. And the priest would ascend again after some kind of vision or some kind of realization. And they would answer. And the answer may sound something like, if you submit the right sacrifices, you pay homage and you explain with great sacrifice to the God that you currently serve, you will find favor in this new endeavor and bring glory to your people. Make sure you come to the temple of Apollo 
with your first fruits gifts, you will find favor, and then the doors will close. And they would go home. My point in telling you that story is the level that people went to to seek a response from a God that we know is no God at all. Deuteronomy 30. I'll say it again. I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you, and that I have said before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose, choose, therefore choose life that both you and your descendants may live. It doesn't sound like a really tough decision there between a million dollars and a candy bar. But we are to choose one, and that is to choose life. Choose life that both you and your descendants may live and you may love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength and you may love your neighbor as yourself. Choose life. When you choose life, you've chosen God. Jesus says again in John chapter 10, 10, I have come that you, they, may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So in choosing Jesus, not only will you have life, but you will have life that is of excess, overflowing with surplus, above and beyond more than you can possibly comprehend, extraordinary life, above the ordinary, more sufficient, choose life. And so we do. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we say, I know my Redeemer lives. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we say, Jesus is my Lord and Savior. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we say, I believe in God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we believe that those who fall asleep in the Lord are with the Lord, even at this present time. The decision remains a simple one. But now I ask you an additional question. How do you make decisions for everyday life? So you look at the options. You have guidance and direction. Where do you look? Well, you go to the source. You go to the source, which is, of course, prayer. You begin to pray just as they said. You pray that God would reveal to you that which he desires to reveal to you. Another source you may use is people. We have a plethora of people in this congregation that have, I don't know if this is a technical term, gobs and gobs of experience. We make use of that by going to people, speaking to one another, and asking, what have you done? What might you suggest? And finally, is there a precedence with that? I remember going to my mom, and this was later in life, when I guess she would say I was more interesting than when I was a child. And I asked her for advice. And I was just learning how to take advice. I didn't quite understand all the concepts. I prayed about it, and I talked to others, and now I wanted to go to my mom. She's, she's my go-to. And I said, now I know people can give advice, and when they give advice, I still have a choice whether or not to use that advice to actually do what they're advising or not. And I never want to offend somebody when I'm asking what they think because I just want to be able to make my own decision. And I think that's wisdom. In fact, I learned it from her years ago. So sometimes that's it. So you have all of that going on in your life. But how often have you thought about what am I going to do tomorrow? What am I going to do today? What are my choices? And you said, you know what, I, I think I need to go 
where there's someone that might have the answers. Maybe I should travel the 15 miles or the 15 day journey, figuratively speaking, and seek what's being revealed. It's not the oracle, oracle of Apollo, it's the actual written word, the oracle of God. God's word contains wisdom. And wisdom, I would say to you this morning and every day of my life, for every situation. And so to immerse yourself in God's word, to find a good Bible that has concordance, a good study Bible that continues to toe the line of truth and purity, and, and to read what God says might be just the ticket to following the wisdom of God. Using human wisdom, using the guidance they've been given by Jesus Christ, Peter and the apostles all got together and said, you know, I see two individuals that just have risen above the rest, but I just don't know. And maybe the apostle says, we don't know either. What are we to do? The first thing they did was pray. The second thing they actually did was cast lots. And it fell upon the fire. And there it is. They didn't question. They say, well, two out of three? Three out of five? No, they went with it. Which begs the questions for us today. Okay, so you have options. You have guidance and you have direction. You have the power, the free will to choose. And that's where the world, sinful flesh, and Satan begin to work. Because now that you have all the tools and all the information, and perhaps even the answer right in front of you, the world, your sinful flesh, and Satan make things messy. That's why we call it sin. That's when we say, well, I'm going to do what I want, and it's another good choice. And you may say, well, pastor, God's word doesn't give a clear definition of whether I should wear a green shirt or a blue shirt. That's probably time for another message and another sermon and another study, because that's not the choices that I'm talking about. And it's not whether we're pink or white or grapes or pizza. But it is about taking the quarter or not taking the quarter. It is about listening to your father's will and not listening to your father's will. There are real rights and wrongs there. And some of them are so clear. But to, to hunger for this Bible, to hunger for God's word, to want to seek his face, and to have him open up his word to you is a, a most amazing and powerful thing. Choosing life is what we're about and what God's about. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, James would say and echo later from Proverbs 18. So we choose life because we've chosen Christ. There's choices that are, are before you today. Pray. Seek wisdom. Seek guidance from others. But most of all, turn to your Bibles. Look into God's Word and to see if it's revealed. And if you're struggling with that, ask. Ask someone to reveal it to you because that's where you're going to find the answers after all he is the answer god i pray in jesus name that you so empower the people that are here today and the ones that are hearing the message perhaps over the internet that they would be drawn to your word and they would be drawn to seeking your knowledge your will as you have revealed it in the bible I ask, Lord, that you would continue to guide St. Peter Lutheran Church and all the churches in Christendom as they seek to follow your word and to do your will. May we be the beacon of our community, equipped and equipping, empowered and empowering.
and sharing the hope and love of Jesus, which was first shared to us by so many before us. I pray this in the strong and precious name of Jesus. Amen. And now may the peace which passes all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus in his word to life everlasting. Please stand and let's proclaim our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Begotten of this Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God and very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us in the conscious life. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and descended in the heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to the glory of the judge of the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge my baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As dear children ask their dear Father, let us now bring to the Lord our prayers this day, knowing that he will hear us and respond to our petitions. O oh, Heavenly Father, we come to you. We come to you this day as citizens of our blessed land. We pray for the world in which we live and for the leaders of every nation as well as of our own that peace would prevail around the globe, and that we may live without fear in our times. Lord, in your mercy, in this season of growth, we pray for the church, that it may grow and flourish, even in those places where persecution for our Lord's sake is known. Grant that there would be unhindered access to the table of the Lord in every land. Lord, in your mercy, Gathered in heart and mind, we pray for those in need of our special petitions, including, including those who have been distanced from this fellowship today, and including those dealing with illnesses and the homebound. We ask, Lord, that you would strengthen the bodies that are suffering, give mercy and grace to those who are under that affliction. May their bodies heal supernaturally, pain be gone. We know that you are the author and giver of all things. We also remember these days those who are grieving. We ask that their loss be comforted by sure and certain hope of everlasting life. <clears throat> their knowledge would result in a faith that feels your peace which abides with them. According to your good and gracious will, bring strength to the weak, assurance to the fearful, and hope to those in peril. Lord, in your mercy, we give thanks as we remember those whose earthly lives have been completed, friends and relatives, members of this household of faith, and many others. We ask that you would grant that the memory of those who have fallen asleep would remind us of the blessed hope and resurrection of eternal life and the invitation that we ourselves have for that wonderful banquet. Lord, in your mercy, Gathered in the forgiving love of Christ and assured that our Heavenly Father hears our petitions, we ask, Lord, that you would now hear us as we seek to grow our church and the whole church on earth. One by one, step by step, we offer our prayers to you, 
seeking not only wisdom and not only knowledge, but the spirit and the desire. This we ask in the strong and precious name of Jesus and all God's people said, Amen. You may be seated now. At this time, we'll receive, uh, uh, have an uh, our offering, and so uh, we'll have that now. First given to us by you, now return for your glory. May these first fruits give the opportunity for your kingdom to come. Amen. We stand for the time of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore praising you and singing. We do proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. 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 
O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat. This is the body of Jesus Christ. Shed for you. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Given and shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This is the body of Christ for you. Take and eat the body of Jesus for you. Take and eat. This is the true body of Jesus Christ. Came and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and eat the body of Jesus. Take and eat the true body of Jesus Christ. Came and shed for you in one heart. Take and eat the body of Christ. Have the Father, Son, and Spirit blessed with you in all moments. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you.
We pray a prayer of thanksgiving. Grant, O Lord, that the lips that have sung your praises in this sanctuary may glorify you in the world, that the ears that have heard the voice of your song may be closed to the voices and the clamor and the disputes, that the eyes that have seen your great love may also behold your blessed hope, that the tongues that have confessed your name may ever speak the truth, and that the bodies of all who have tasted your Son's living body and blood may be restored to newness of life. We pray this through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You're about to go forth into the world. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his countenance and give you his peace. Amen. Our final song, Onward to Christian Soul. Round day.